Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this Travel Deeper Philippines series. We'll call it season one of the Philippines as I still have a ton of things I wanna see and do in the country. Thanks in large part to all of your comments here on the YouTube comments and also on Instagram. I already have season two already planned out and I hope to get back very, very soon. With that being said, let me preface this video by saying of the 7,000 plus Philippine islands, I visited about 24 of them, including a few small islands. So let me be the first to say that me sitting here telling you exactly what the Philippines is like and the culture and all of the dynamics would be pretty ignorant. All I am speaking on in this video, this travel guide, if you will, is my own experience within the Philippines. I spent a total of 78 days in the country from January 16th until April 14th of 2018. Now, based on the positive feedback from the Iceland travel guide I did recently, the goal of this video is to share with you guys everything that I learned from traveling throughout the Philippines. That's everything from logistics and visas, the cost, transportation, to some of my favorites and highlights, and then also some of the setbacks and frustrations, if you will, from traveling around the country for three months. But before I get started with all the details, I wanna take a quick minute and say thank you to the sponsor of this video, and that is Audible. This is actually a perfect sponsor for this episode in particular, because throughout my trip to the Philippines, I used Audible a lot. For example, that long trip from Manila to Northern Luzon, about a 10 hour ride, I actually listened to Open by Andre Agassi, which is a great autobiography. And if you're making a long road trip, this is a perfect listen, so check that out for sure. And also Audible has these things called Audible Originals, which are exclusive audio titles created by some of the most celebrated storytellers from all walks of life, from theater, journalism, and literature, and much more. If you wanna check them out, you get your first audiobook for free with a 30-day trial. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash Gareth, or if you're a US watcher of this video, you just have to text Gareth to 500-500. And for those of you that have that new year, new me attitude, and one of your goals this year was to travel more, this is a great opportunity to pick up some of these audiobooks and be inspired to travel. Some of my favorites include Vagabonding by Rolf Potts, or The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, and I actually created a list of 10 books that helped change my life, and you can check those out in the video description link below. You can grab all of those as audiobooks as well. I highly recommend it. So again, if you wanna check that out and get your first audiobook for free, all you have to do is go to audible.com slash Gareth, or text Gareth to 500-500 if you're in the US. So with that being said, a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring this. Let's jump into the video. I figure the best way to kick things off is right at the beginning when you enter into the country itself. And for that, what are the visa requirements? If you're a US citizen and many other countries on this list, you do not need a visa entering into the country if you are staying less than 30 days. But let's say for example that you wanna stay longer than 30, what do you do? Now, this is the same tip for many other countries like this. What you'll need to do is you have to prove that you're leaving within 30 days. So what I did is I bought a one-way ticket in and then a very cheap ticket out within the 30-day period. So for example, from Manila, you can get cheap tickets to Taipei, Hong Kong, Vietnam. So I bought a, I think it was $45 one-way ticket from Manila out of the country. And then once that 30 days come, you just don't use it. But before that time, you have to get your visa renewed from either a consulate, embassy, or visa office. Actually, you can file for an extension right at the Manila airport when you arrive. You just tell customs, I'd like to have an extension. They take you off in this little room, you wait a little while, and you pay a fee, and you can get up to 59 days in the country. Got it, got it. That only took about 25 minutes. I have officially a visa extension. You are supposed to get 30 days tourist visa here in the Philippines but I was told that you can go in the airport to the immigration office and get an extension right when you get here. So I officially have 59 days in the country. 
and then I only had to renew my visa another one time while I was there. So a really good thing to do. If you are not from one of these countries where you need a visa in advance, I'll leave more information again in the video description so you can check that out. But it's a very easy process if you are from one of these countries. The second topic and perhaps the most frequent question that I receive is, are the Philippines a safe place to travel to? Now, what you hear in the news, and this is true to so many places, isn't a direct reflection of the country itself, more often than not. And the people that were telling me not to go to the Philippines before I made this trip, 100% of them have never been to the Philippines. So let me tell you right off the bat, there wasn't one day of the 78 days that I was in the country that I felt uncomfortable, unsafe, in a dangerous position. Again, I am six foot two, 200 pounds, so take this information with a grain of salt, as in any situation, in any country you are, even if you're at home, never travel around by yourself at night, don't go into dodgy situations, Always ask a local or take advice from a local. If they tell you not to go to a certain region or a certain area, just don't go. That's as easy as I can make it. Now, you always have to look out for pickpockets, especially in Cebu and Manila, but the truth is, it was one of the most comforting and inviting countries I've ever been to. The Filipino people have been nothing but warm and friendly and curious. If you're filming something, they'll come over and say hi and see what you're doing. Stands everywhere. Take a picture, right? Hey! hey. Picture. <laughs> it really is an inviting and warm place and you can definitely travel around the country solo. Now, one of the big things that, that people see on the news is the southern part of the Philippines. And to be honest with you, I didn't spend much time in Mindanao or other places that are, that are in the news often and that's Sulu Islands and some things like that. But my good friend Mike Corey and another group of YouTubers did a whole series around the south of the Philippines, so definitely check that out. Muslim extremist groups terrorized the island. They left scars on his people and scars on what it means to be Muslim. These days are coming to an end. I met Kulas and Kumar becoming Filipino, and I was asked if I wanted to join them to meet the governor of the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao and to start cracking the shell of negativity around this beautiful place. On my next trip, I will plan on spending a lot more time in the south. I really want to go to Davao, I want to go around Mindanao and, and experience this place and, and for, for what it really is beyond what you just see in the news headlines. Next up is transportation and let's start out with airlines. You can get a ton of cheap flights from $35 up to $100 in between a lot of the different islands especially if you're taking off and returning to Manila or Cebu. Now, Palawan and Shargao and places that are a little bit more remote, obviously the prices are gonna be a little higher just because there isn't as many flights that day. Now, Shargao in particular is getting an international airport, so I do see those prices going down a little bit. So that's flights. The second thing is city travel. And the number one thing that I used when I was in the cities of Manila and Cebu was Uber. They were very easy, very safe, and you can get trips from $3 to $10, all the way if you're going to the airport, it's like $12. So a really good option there. But the most popular of all of the Philippines transportation is probably the jeepney, which are these converted school buses. And while they're a little bit cramped and also hot and they take a little bit longer, they're a very cheap option. And you can also ride in style. Another alternative is tricycles, both in city and on the islands. You can put your luggage on there, groceries, it fits a couple people somewhat uncomfortably, but it's still a great way to get around and they're very cheap. And along those same lines, you have moto taxis or hobble hobbles, which have the wooden planks on the side in some of the islands. And those are great to weave through traffic. It's just a little bit more sketchy if you're not used to it. In Manila in particular, they do have a metro system. It's not all encompassing. That's pretty limited as far as the ground that it covers. But if you're heading into downtown, it's a very good option. If you go the right time of the day, it can get very crowded. And on the islands, the number one thing to do, the best possible solution for transportation is renting a scooter. Oh. <laughs> 
You can get them anywhere between $4 to $10 a day, and they are the best way to see and just experience this, this incredible islands that Philippines has to offer. Moving forward is accommodation. In the cities Manila and Cebu, I stayed in Airbnbs or homestays, and you could get a great place with a pool, a gym, your own kitchen, your own space, and I averaged about 40 US dollars a night for this. There's a ton of different options for that and wide ranging. You can have a penthouse for a couple hundred dollars a night or you can stay with a family for five, ten dollars a night. So a really a lot of good options in there. And then when you get over to the islands, you have resorts and hotels that are five stars and cost hundreds of dollars. Or you can stay in hostels or little cabanas on the beaches for next to nothing. So really a ton of different options depending on your budget. So I won't get into too much detail there. If you can see from my travels, you know that I stayed in all sorts of varieties of different accommodations. So it really depends on your budget and the location. As far as Airbnb goes, once you're on different islands, it does become a little bit limited. So if you are booking in advance, you'll have more of a chance to, to get the places that you want within your budget. Next up is one of the uh, more interesting, or I, I should say tricky aspects of the daily life in the Philippines for me as a, as a foreigner, and that is the cell phones and Wi-Fi. So cell phones, you have two carriers. You have Smart and you have Globe. Those are the big competitors. And it's said that Globe is better in the cities and Smart is better on the islands. But the truth is, I tried both and I found them pretty comparable. I guess Smart is a little bit better on the islands. But it's an interesting system what they do. There is unlimited plans where you can get data and unlimited data, but I'm told, and from what I saw, the unlimited plans kind of slow down as you use more data. Now there's these other things where you can get codes. Local friends would tell me, oh, put in this code and you can get you know, something like five gigs for 10 bucks or all these different scenarios that you press in a code and then you get a response. And it, it's pretty interesting and it took me a while to get used to. So if you go there and you have somebody local to help you set up your phone, maybe go into a Smart or Globe store at the beginning and figure it all out. All right, the next thing I had to figure out was a data plan, a SIM card. I, I'll be honest with you, it's pretty confusing here. Most places I've been, you get a SIM card, you load data, you pay a certain amount and it's set. Here you have to load and then there's certain codes you can use to get more data and then you gotta turn your data off when you're loading. It's, it's a little confusing. I know I'll get it, but it's just one more thing that you don't think about when you're in a foreign place or traveling or living in a foreign place. Just these little tasks that are more difficult when it's new to you, but I'll get it down. Let's go get something to eat. The one very nice thing when you're trying to figure all this out is that most people, a huge majority of the population speak English. I shouldn't make that its own category, but now you know. English, you can use that almost everywhere. And as it comes to the Wi-Fi, eh, Manila is pretty good. Cebu is pretty good, especially in certain Airbnbs. And then when you go to the islands, usually some restaurant or hotel or hostel will pay extra to have a bigger satellite or something to get better Wi-Fi, so you have to do a little bit of searching. It's a bit spotty at best in some places, but you can get by. So uh, make sure you get a local SIM card or an international data plan if you have that option. And good luck. That was one major frustration of traveling around and trying to be online all the time and upload videos for you guys. So take that into consideration. Next up, one of the best things on the entire list is the food of the Philippines. Oh man. <laughs> now, as you can see from the cuisine, it's a direct correlation to the history and the past and the culture of this country. The Spanish have been here, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Americans, and that's all mixed together in this incredible and diverse cuisine. You have dishes like pancet or adobo and all these stir fries and curries. It really is an incredible mix of food and flavors. And every dish is usually served with rice and on the side there's vinegar, there's usually chili, there's soy sauce, then there's also calamansi and you blend those all together and that's your dipping sauce. My favorite dishes included sisig in Angeles, just north of Manila. Also the lechon from Cebu 
in the La Paz Bok Choy from the La Paz market in Iloilo. On top of that, the fresh seafood, especially in the markets of Shargao, and also on the Tao expedition, the fresh fish was absolutely delicious. And beyond that, I probably ate my weight in mangoes and drank enough coconut water to last me a lifetime. There's also a ton of unique street food choices, as you may have seen from the Manila street food video. There is some uh, interesting selections out there from chicken feet and intestines to blood clots and the most popular of them all, Baloo. Oh yeah, a little more vinegar. Oh, I can feel the, the duck crunching, the embryo crunching. And last, but maybe not least, is the fast food in the Philippines. It is very popular, Jolly Bees in almost every corner. And if you wanna learn more about that, check out the video I did with my friend Zar at the Mall of Asia. Went around and tested all this, the different fast food spots. That um, didn't sit well with me later. All right, now that we've covered all the generalities, let's jump into the particular destinations. I wanna do kind of a rapid fire of my itinerary and each place that I hit and some of the highlights from each location. I actually set up the trip in two separate parts. So I flew into Manila and then I did a set of islands. I came back to Manila for about two weeks to get on the internet, take a deep breath, do some laundry, and then I jumped in and did another set of islands. So I guess we should start at the beginning and that is Manila. And I have to say, Manila gets a pretty bad rap. I mean, everybody tells me, oh, wait till you get out of Manila, oh, don't stay in Manila too long. And I agree, the traffic is very bad. Um, there's a lot of poverty in the streets. It's pretty dirty at times, it's very hot. But the truth is, there are a lot of really cool things to see in Manila. For example, Intramuros, the area downtown around the fort and the cobblestone streets, it's really nice and a great historic aspect of the country. The other thing is the downtown market. There's so many different varieties of fruits and vegetables and people watching is really cool. And then on the extreme other side of that is BGC and Makati and these financial more modern areas that are really interesting and have a ton of huge malls which are air conditioned and are a really good idea if you're very hot in the city but they're just extremely big. Mall of Asia is a whole world unto itself. And then on top of that, my favorite aspect, probably all of Manila, is the night markets. You have places like A Venue, where you can go and get great street food, listen to live music and hang out in Poblacion and some of these new areas or developing areas, I should say, have great restaurants and nightlife. So. As long as you're not sitting in traffic in Manila, I think it's a great place to stop and spend a couple of days, even if you're just passing through. But I just always wanna look at the bright side of every place and I give it a little more credit than a lot of people do. And from one big city to the next, after Manila, I went to Cebu City to celebrate the Sinolog Festival, which is the biggest and craziest festival in all of the Philippines. It is a super historic city that it's where it's said that Magellan had landed and first brought Catholicism to the Philippines, so a very interesting spot unto itself. And the, the festival is just uh, mind-blowing. There's millions and millions of people there celebrating. Everybody's got a little Santo Nino, and everybody's yelling, Pit Senor. It's truly uh, unique to the Philippines and a really great experience. <laughs> And beyond the Sinaloa Festival, a little personal moment, if you guys have watched the series, from Cebu is where I got to see where my grandfather was stationed and as he came through the Philippines in World War II. So Cebu itself was a very special time for me and a great place to start off the trip. And outside of Cebu City as well is incredible. The waterfalls on the opposite side of the island are absolutely breathtaking. And perhaps the most popular thing to do in Cebu is the, the snorkeling with whale sharks in Oslo. Some people say don't go because they feed the whale sharks and it's not a part of their natural habitat, natural 
uh, migration pattern and they stay there for too long while others just want to go and experience the beauty of these incredible creatures. Now, I particularly did not go. I just didn't think it was a good idea, but if you want to go, I would love to hear feedback of what you felt and what you saw in your experience there. So that is Cebu. And from Cebu City, I flew to Ilo Ilo City to keep the festival energy going. I went to Dinigiang Festival, which felt much different than Sinalog. It was, it felt smaller, it felt a little bit more cozy, a little bit more of a small town environment. Also, a ton of different cultural events going on and a lot of different street food stalls and a really great atmosphere and a great energy. And the kids in the festival itself were unbelievable. I mean, the costumes and the dances that they performed was really remarkable. It felt like I was in a Cirque du Soleil show for just hours and hours on end. It was very cool. And if you go to Iloilo any other time of the year when there's not a festival going on, make sure you stop at La Paz Market for that La Paz bok choy. It was the best meal that I had in the Philippines, hands down. From Iloilo, I went to Dumaguete on Negros Island where I stayed at the Atmosphere Resorts in just outside of Dumaguete in a town called Darwin. And this was right across from Apo Island where I had one of the best dive experiences in the country. Got to see so many sea turtles right there at the sanctuary on Apo Island. And then from there, through Atmosphere, I went into the city and got to explore a lot and also check out their social programs, the soup kitchen that they've set up to help kids stay in school. Instead of going off and, and doing all these jobs and working, it keeps them in school with the soup kitchen that they have set up. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend it, check it out. I'll leave the link somewhere, it will pop up above. And then from there, from Dumaguete, you can go right over to one of the most popular things in the Philippines right now, thanks to social media, and that is Manhuyad Sandbar a huge vast sandbar where at low tide you can get out and just walk around. There's these big huts on pillars sticking out of the water and it's very picturesque and a great place to spend the day. From Dumaguete, I took the ferry over to Sikihor Island where I rented a scooter for the first time and got to really just cruise around the island and explore on my own. I spent my birthday here on Sikihor where I learned to do backflips off the waterfalls. Well, I tried to do backflips off the waterfalls. Then I also went cliff diving at some of the most popular beaches, stuck my feet in this weird pond where the fish come and bite you a little bit and tear off your dead skin. It wasn't for me, that was, that was really weird. But then a highlight was also, I got to go through the town of La Cie, see an old church, and then cruise up to the top of Sikihor Island for sunset. There's this incredible tower that just looks above the entire island, and I was up there on my own for sunset. It was just, it was a beautiful place. And after almost a week on Sikihor Island, I went back to Dumaguete via ferry and then flew back to Manila to take a deep breath for the second part of the adventure. And I started this second leg off with a trip to the north, actually. So thankfully to some local friends, I made the 10 hour journey north to a place called Bauco, which is a small town just outside of Sagada, a few hours outside of Sagada, which is probably the most popular place for tourism up north. Most people go to Baguio and then Baguio up to Sagada. And let me tell you, when I come back and do season two of Travel Deeper Philippines, I will spend a lot more time in the north. It is absolutely beautiful. There's huge mountain ranges and the rice terraces, incredible fresh food. It is really a breathtaking place to be. And what a lot of people miss when they come to the Philippines, simply because the tropical islands to the south are so beautiful as well. But this is not to be missed if you come here definitely head north as well. And after making the long trip back from northern Luzon to Manila, I took a flight to Bohol. And Bohol is interesting in the fact that it was probably the most attraction-based island that I went to. And what I mean by that is you have some pretty iconic things there, like the Targiers and the Chocolate Hills, and also some of the rivers that a lot of people go to see. And they're worth the trip. Targiers are a, a, a funny and really interesting creature and the chocolate hills are like no other landscape I've ever seen. I stayed right on Panglao Island and from Panglao Island had an awesome dive just offshore on Palikasag Island and this is where I got to see that school of jackfish which was the coolest dive experience of my entire life. It was just encapsulated by all hundreds and hundreds of these jackfish it was 
just awesome. It was so cool. And then on top of that, there's a great Virgin Island that's there. They have a couple of beaches on the back side of Panglao Island. And the next time I go, the next time I go to Bohol, I'd like to check out the eastern side. I didn't spend much time over there and I heard it's just as beautiful. There isn't as many people. So that's the plan moving forward. But Bohol was a great stop. And then from Bohol, I went to Kamagian Island and this was a last minute addition. A local friend named Sydney said, you got to check out Kamagian Island. It's truly unique. So I took the ferry from Bohol down to Kamagian for a couple of days and it really was worth it. There is these incredible volcanoes that jet out from the sea, seemingly in the middle of nowhere with this lush jungle. There's ruins, there's an underwater cemetery just offshore. It's one of the coolest sandbars, the coolest beaches I've ever seen on White Island. And just around the island, there's a lot of conservation efforts and fish sanctuaries. It really is a great place to stop and spend a few days kind of off the beaten path of what most people do when they come to the Philippines. Then from Kamagian Island, I flew to Bohol, Bohol to Cebu, Cebu to Shargao. And Shargao is probably the most hyped up, the most popular island at the moment. It's the up and coming island in the Philippines right now. It's the surf capital of the country. A new movie called Shargao just came out and that made it popular amongst Filipino travelers. And it really is an incredible place. It's got a great surf culture, both local and international travelers are there at the moment. I am a little concerned just because it is becoming very popular very quickly. There's supposed to be an international airport, as I mentioned before, coming into the island. And I just hope that it remains true to what it's trying to do and be a, an alternative to places like Boracay, which recently was closed down because there was just too much tourism and has now reopened. But the idea is that I just hope for them and I hope that they keep this sustainable tourism going despite being so popular because it's worth it. I mean, they have everything there from waterfalls, they have boat trips out, they have the Sugba Lagoon, which is this incredible emerald green lagoon in the middle of these gigantic mountain cliffs. And it has everything. And so I just hope that in 10 years, if I watch this video back, I, I won't think it's like some places in Thailand that have just gotten completely overrun with tourism. And the highlight of the entire trip, and if you want a little bit of perspective on this, is I went and spent a day with the Sun Crew in Shargao, and it was probably the most impactful and fun day that I had in the entire Philippines trip. Unbelievable to see how plastic is affecting our world from the villagers that are directly impacted by the outside world with plastic washing up on their beaches. And these kids are trying their best to not only clean up the beach, but also educate everybody in the area on, on why it's so important to recycle and why it's so important to conserve and, and to not just throw things away and to use less plastic. And last, but certainly not least, from Shargao, I flew to Palawan. I actually flew into Puerto Princesa because I had to get my visa updated. I was only there for one day. I'd like to spend more time there and do the underwater rivers. That seems like a really cool spot, but from but the Princesa, I took a wild bus ride up to El Nido. It was one of those group tour bus caravans and this guy just flew up there. It took a few hours when it was supposed to take a lot longer. And then once in El Nido, I only had a couple of days, so I got to see some of the beaches in Nakpam Beach, one of the most popular beaches in El Nido, in Palawan for that matter. And a, a beautiful beach, very clean, a really nice way to spend the day. And then from El Nido, I jumped on a Tao expedition and spent five days exploring the different islands with the sustainable tourism. And if you ever have a chance, if I recommend one thing to do in the Philippines, it would be take a Tao expedition just because they're doing tourism the right way. And they're showing how you can positively impact a community through tourism. It really is incredible. And then from the Tao expedition, we docked in Koron, where I ended my trip diving Japanese warships and then taking a private boat tour around all the incredible attractions around Koron. It was a great way to finish off three months in this incredible country. And then I flew back to Manila and off to Tokyo, and that was it for my trip to the Philippines. Whew. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Please leave a comment below. All right, just to finish up, a few final things, some rapid fire. My favorite group trip was definitely the Tao Expedition. 
My favorite hotel or resort I stayed at was Atmosphere just outside of Dumaguete. My favorite food, La Paz Bok Choy outside of Iloilo and La Paz Market. My favorite aspect of Filipino culture was the fact that they played basketball everywhere. Anywhere you wanted to go from the beach to the city, I got to play basketball all the time. They had the NBA on. Basketball is a life passion of mine and to see all them playing all the time was so much fun. So that was a huge highlight. And just the people, I mentioned this before, but it really made the trip worthwhile. I mean, the beaches are beautiful and the landscapes are everything, but the people are just very, very special. And I hope that they can keep this welcome spirit and they're so curious and so fun. I hope they remain this way as tourism inevitably increases. And this video doesn't help, I know that, but hopefully I can send a positive message. And that is, um, if you do go, and hopefully you do, you treat it with respect and you'll have a great time. That's it, hope you guys liked the video. I know it was a long one, but I really wanted to kind of show all of my different ideas and what I've learned from this trip. Big thanks again to Audible for allowing me to make this video. Thank you for sponsoring. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next week. Again, make sure to check me out. I'm gonna be live next Friday. Next Friday from the date this came out, following week. Make sure you come and say hi. Thank you guys so much. Travel deeper. See you next week.